<laughs> All right, everyone. We're learning about how to do tshuva. Here is the, the altar Rebbe, the first Rebbe of Chabad is explaining us what tshuva is. First of all, it starts off with the statement which is near the end of the Yom, Yom of the Gomorrah, that if a person does a sin, it's not over. If a person does a sin, you can fix it up. It's possible to fix it up. Starting tomorrow. Tomorrow, yeah. What? Tomorrow. Tomorrow's what? Tomorrow's Tuesday. Oh, yeah. Okay. So we said, if you do a positive commandment, if you, do a, uh, if, you, if you transgress a positive commandment, you were supposed to say Shema Yisrael. You didn't say it on time. You were supposed to uh, give charity. You didn't give charity. You were supposed to put on tefillin. You were supposed to put a mezuzah on your. You were supposed to put tzitzes on your garment. You didn't do one of these positive commandments. You did a sin. So <clears throat> in some ways, the blemish is worse the, the, because you were supposed to... What happens when you do a commandment? When you do a commandment, you draw a certain degree of godliness in the world, you connect a certain level of godliness to the world. That's why it's so important that all the Jews should do all the commandments because when the Jews do the commandments, this is what attaches the Creator to His creation. And that's why it's so, so really wrong and, how do you say, evil, those people who say that the Jewish people don't have to do commandments anymore, how destructive it is because the commandments attach the Creator to the creation. But what if a Jew decides he doesn't want to do it? He doesn't do a commandment. So it says, if you repent, what does it mean, repent, repent? Let's say for our purposes, it means you ask God for forgiveness. You say, God, please forgive me. I didn't put on tefillin. You're forgiven immediately. If you transgress a negative commandment, what? if you transgress a negative commandment, then it's a little bit harder. Then you have to Re- re- repent, but you have to wait for Yom Kippur. The holiday of Yom Kippur also brings forgiveness. So let's see, here we go. Ready? I'm sorry, I'm on the wrong page. Okay. <clears throat> All right, let's take the last word on the last word, over. Vow over, and one who transgresses, al, an, mitzvot lotase, and a negative commandment. Right? A person was not supposed to eat kosher, he was not supposed to eat unkosher food, and he ate it. He wasn't supposed to smoke a cigarette on Shabbos, and he smoked it. He wasn't supposed to eat anything on Yom Kippur, and he ate. Right? He, he wasn't supposed to steal, he stole. He transgressed a negative commandment. Al Yudei by means of Shenidba Kara, that, how do you call it, Ra, uh, evil, bad, gets stuck, but not show it to his soul. Ose Pegam Lamaila, it makes a blemish above, Bishor Shah, and its source, Umokar Chutzba, and in the place where it's carved out from. In other words, what happens if you transgress, how do you transgress a positive commandment? You don't do anything. You were supposed to put on tefillin, you don't do it. You were supposed to give charity, you didn't do it. You were supposed to learn Torah, you didn't, you didn't want to do it. So it ends up, you didn't do anything bad. You just refused to do something good. You were supposed to do something, you didn't do it. So because you didn't do anything, you didn't put your energy, you didn't expend your will and your energy in a positive way to go against God. You just sat there and did nothing. So if so, the blemish on your soul is not so bad. Therefore, if you do, if you repent, and you ask God for forgiveness, He forgives immediately. But what happens if you do a negative commandment? It means you have to actually do something. You've got to be involved in going against God. You have to do it. You're not supposed to eat. You eat. Right? You decide, I am yes going to eat. I am yes going to, to steal. I am yes going to, to do another sin. I'm going to do... Th- so it ends up that you do it by means of doing this as it makes more evil sticking onto your soul. Now what is this thing of evil? Evil means essentially egotism. Evil means anything, according to the definition of the Tanya, 
Anything which is not revealed godliness is called evil. And we're going to explain, explain previously in the Tanya that there's really four levels of this evil, if you want to call it. There's four levels. There's three levels which are cannot be fixed up. That's called klipotatameot. And there's one level which is nature. So the, the Tanya wants to say over here a very interesting thing that evil is not necessarily what you get punished for. Just acting naturally is not necessarily anything wrong. A person's tired, he wants to go to sleep. A person wants to eat. Right? He eats, uh, he's hungry, he eats. That's nature. <coughs> That's nature. It's not a thing if you eat a meal. It's not... But if a person goes to sleep just because he's doing it, just because he's tired, he's not doing it to serve God. So that doesn't reveal godliness in the world. That is called a new definition, a totally nef- nef- new definition of bad. Evil might be a little sort of have bad con- connotations, their own connotations. But it's called bad. Bad is anything that doesn't reveal godliness. So, so my house, that tree out there, is called bad. It's not the type of bad you have to destroy it. You have to, you're going to get punished for doing it. But, but it's bad because you're not doing your job. You're not doing your job. A Jew is supposed to reveal godliness all the time in the world. That's why we're here. If you don't do it, it's, it's not good. It's like a person coming to job, coming to a job and finding some sort of a loophole where he doesn't have to do anything. He just sits there the whole day and does nothing. Right? And the boss comes to him and says, what are you doing? You're not doing anything. He says, yeah, I'm not doing anything bad either. <clears throat> doing anything. You're fired. You can't fire me. I mean, you have to give me a, a month's notice, three months notice. Right? So if so, you, can, you just sit there and do nothing. So you're not doing anything positive. You're not doing your job. That's called bad. Just letting things go. You, that's called bad. How much more so if you do something that's against Right, something wrong. Right, the big sign says, "Do not smash your computer." Right, but you smash it. You got mad. Why did you smash it? I got mad at it. I, I decided I wanted to. I hate you. Right, different reasons. It's like the three clippers of Timaeus, the three levels of of bad. Right, why did you smash your computer? Why you're not supposed to do it? Because I got angry. I got angry. It didn't work. Oh, he did it out of heatedness. Right. Why did you smash it? Because I like smashing it. Well, that's that's not, that's already worse, right? That's already why because well, I hate you. I'm going to smash it. Oh, that's sometimes people do sins because they can't hold themselves back. They can't hold themselves back. They're, they're, they have a yates or horror. They just some people times people do sins because they don't know any better. They just don't know any better. Sometimes they, people do sins because they want to go against God. No one's going to tell me what to do. That's like the three in, in impure clippers. But any case, however it is, when a person does a sin, there clings to him a certain type of egotism, a certain type of nature that makes him feel there is no God. No such thing. I'm the boss. I, I'm the boss. It says, <clears throat> this makes a blemish in your soul, and it also makes a blemish in, so to speak, in God. It says it makes a blemish in the ten spherot of Asiya. It makes the ten, it may, a blemish in the ten aspects of the world of Asiya. Like it says in Tikkuni Zohar, Levushin Tikinas Lon, there are certain garments, these garments are the Sfirot, the Mineu, that from them, Parchin Nishmosin, souls fly out, Lebenei Adam, Kuli. So the source of the souls come from what's called the Sfirot of God, the aspects of God. So there's a blemish there also. Lokach, therefore, Ein Kapora Lanavsho, therefore, there is no forgiveness for your soul. Valola Maila, not above and not below. Ad until Yom Kippur. Kamosh Katuv, like it says, Vechaper ala Kodesh, that you bring forgiveness for the holiness. What do you have? Do you have to bring forgiveness for the holiness? Yes, Mituma Oz ben Israel, from the impurities of the Jewish people, Umi Pishayem, and from their sins. When the Jewish people do a sin, they actually defile God Himself. They actually make a blemish in God. How can this possibly be? How can it possibly be? Because we see that God cares about the creations. All the creations He cares about. And especially people. And especially the Jewish people. Right? The Jewish people are called, the, Jew, the non-Jewish people are called, they're created in God's image. The Jewish people are called sons of God. That's even a higher level. So, so God cares about all of His creations. How much the Jewish people, if a Jew does a sin, so to speak, it makes a blemish in God. It says, Bekult Sorotam Lotzar. That Hashem Himself gets a, a pain from the Jewish people. So the holy things have to be 
cleaned up. They have to be cleansed. By means of what? Our doing re repentance. That's what it says. Lifnei Hashem titaro. Before God you will become pure. Lifnei Hashem daika. Before God you will become purified. Before Hashem. What does it mean before Hashem? That you have to go deeper into your soul. You have to go closer to Hashem. Then, only then can you bring forgiveness. Lochein, therefore, ein lil mod mikan, you cannot learn from here, shum kaola, any leniency, but mitzvahs ase, in positive commandments, or befrat, and especially Talmud Torah, especially learning Torah. What's the Rebbe want to say? You might make a mistake and think, in order to get forgiven for a positive commandment, as it's easier. If I, if I transgress a positive commandment, I don't put on tefillin. I don't um, and make Kiddush on Shabbos. I don't learn Torah. So it's easier to get forgiveness. How do you get forgiveness? By just saying, I'm sorry God, I, I, I request forgiveness from you. I won't do it again. On the spot you're forgiven. A negative commandment though is much harder. You have to wait until Yom Kippur. So you might think from this, hey, so the negative commandments are more severe than the positive commandments. Says the Rebbe, no, it's not so. It's just that what? The fact of the matter is, is that the transgressing a negative commandment is more severe because you make a blemish on your soul. You did something wrong. It's like spitting in the king's face. You did a wrong thing, right? So spitting in the king's face, that's bad. That's bad. Uh, you spit in the king's face, it's terrible. But the fact is, is that if you transgress a positive commandment, it's worse. What do you mean it's worse? The king says that he wants you to fix up this hole in the, in his, uh, in the pipe. The king says he wants you to stand guard. On the, uh, in, in, in the, uh, around this castle. And what do you do? You don't do it. You go to sleep. Right? So on one end, it wasn't so bad. You didn't actually do anything against the king. You didn't do anything. So it doesn't make such a blemish on your soul. But on the other hand, the water is coming out. You didn't do what you were supposed to. Right? And not only that, with a Jewish, with a positive commandment from the Jews, you draw godliness into the world. That godliness can never be drawn into the world. So your soul, if you don't do a positive commandment, your soul is not as blemished. But the world is missing a godliness that it could have gotten. Which is not the case of a negative commandment. A negative commandment means you were just supposed to stand there and do nothing. Right? But you decided when, when somebody brings you not kosher food, you just stand there and do nothing. But you decide you were going to eat it. Right? So what were you supposed to do? Just nothing. Just not mess things up. Just nothing. And nevertheless, you decide, yes, you're going to mess things up. Okay, that's bad. You did a bad thing. Right? You, 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 did, a, you did a bad thing. You, messed, you, 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 made, you made a blemish. But if you don't do a positive commandment, it means that you were supposed to do a good thing and you didn't do it. Much worse. Right? You were supposed to connect the birth. You were supposed to make a connection. You didn't do it. So therefore, Adarabba, the positive commandments are much more severe and much more important than the negative commandments. The positive commandments is what keeps the world going around. Omer, as all the rabbis say, Vita forgave. You see where we are, Akib? You have the place? Yes. Mr. Smith, you got the place? Viter, HaKodesh Baruch Hu. The first word in line. Viter, that God was willing to forgive Alavod Zora on idolatry, etc. Af, even though She'en, that they are Krisos, even though that this means excommunication, or Misos based in, and punishable by death. Idolatry is punishable by death. Hashem was willing to forgive it. For lo viter al bitl Talmud Torah. But he was not willing to forgive the absence of learning Torah. Why can't you forgive the absence of learning Torah? It's almost like the person, he's in the, the uh, right, a nurse. A nurse, a guy is on life support, and the nurse comes in and he curses him, he says bad things, and he doesn't treat him right, doesn't treat him nice. He says, okay, that was terrible, he shouldn't have done those things. He said, but that I can forgive the person for. That that he didn't, it is. But I can't forgive him for not turning on the electricity for my father's life support. That I can't. So why can't? Here he did all these other things. He cursed your father out. He said bad things about it. He smeared, threw food at him. He treated him badly, right? That was much worse, isn't it? Much worse? He says, yes, it is. Personally, it's much worse. He did bad things, yes. But here, the, because he went to sleep when he was supposed to turn on the, the, the oxygen, right? He slept through it. That's much worse. The, it, 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 kept, it, it killed him, right? It killed him. You turn up the light. But the same thing, when you do a, a positive commandment, you draw life into the world. 
you draw, when you learn Torah, you draw life into the world. That's why these other religions say, that say that the Jews don't have to learn Torah. All they have to do is believe in some person or something. That's why it's so, so destructive, their ideas, because learning Torah is so important and doing mitzvah, the commandments, so tremendously important. If a person doesn't do that, says, a God can say, listen, you guys, you did idolatry. I understand you have big desires. You have this terrible, awful sin. I can forgive that. But that, that you didn't learn Torah, you didn't draw godliness into the world, you know how much damage you did. You have any idea how much damage you did by not doing the positive things? Only I know. So that Sam said, good, it's easier to get forgiveness for not doing a positive commandment because you don't make such a big blemish on your soul. But the loss to the world is incomparably greater. Next. Over al krisos or misos based in. If a person transgresses on cutting off and the death, which is based in, for instance, like we said before, idolatry, not keeping Shabbat, what happens? A person can do tshuva. You're going to get cut off. You're going to get killed. No, nowadays it doesn't work that way. Tshuva and Yom Kippur, tolim. If you do tshuva with, together with the holiday of Yom Kippur, that suspends any punishment. V'yasurim mamarikim. And, how do you say, suffering. That a person suffers, this cleanses him. What does it mean, suffering? Suffering doesn't mean that you should wear barbed wire undershirts or something. That doesn't mean it. Suffering means perish. Gomrim akapora. It, it finishes the kapora. It means that bad things, God forbid, that happen to a person from heaven. Things that happen to him automatically. He loses his wallet. There's something who knows what. The gomrim akapora, it finishes the forgiveness. What does it mean, kapara? Kapara means cleaning off. Kapara, Yom Kippurim means you get cleaned off. It shines your soul back up. Kapara, the word kapara means to clean off. That it washes off the dirt from the sin. Sheneemar. Like it's because it says, Pakadati Beshebet Pisham, I have visited with a with like a whip your sins, Ubenagaim, and with how do you say with the uh, with the, 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 the diseases of Onam, your sin. Adkan Lashano Habrais, that's what the Bryce says. So, so God forbid, if ever happens to you something bad, or it should never have that whatever happens to a Jew something bad, he can say to himself, Listen, maybe the reason these bad things are happening to me is because Hashem is cleaning me up. Hashem is cleaning me up. I have to accept these things with, with happiness. Of course, that's for you, but you can't say that for somebody else. You can't go to somebody else and say, eh, the reason you're suffering is because you deserve it. God's cleaning you off, right? He's cleaning you off. That you can't say. You see somebody else is suffering, you have to pray to God. Okay, enough, Hashem, heal this person. Right, enough suffering. Right, but suffering is never good. You can never justify somebody else's suffering. You just justify your own suffering. God forbid you should never suffer. And you should also pray that it should stop. If you're suffering, you also pray that it should stop. But nevertheless, you can justify your own suffering. You can't justify somebody else's. What you can do is you can tell the person, listen, I read in the Tanya that sometimes it says that, you know, suffering can, if you see a person, especially if you see a person that's miserable and is complaining, ah, why does it happen to me all the time? And you think that the person can accept it, right? He's a person that's like, with your same beliefs, you can say, listen, I read and I believe this book, the Tanya, and other places it says that sometimes Suffering can cleanse a person off. Could be. I mean, I don't think you have any sins. I think you're a great person. But maybe, who knows? Maybe from past generations, from who knows what it is. Maybe, uh, you know, it could be. Or if the person's a good friend of yours. You can understand, listen, it comes from Hashem, you know. I remember once there was my wife, my wife had, my wife had a lot of, of uh, medical problems, a lot of medical problems. The first time she had uh, my son, my first son, she had to be in the hospital for like eight months or something like that in what they call... Uh, uh, Shmirat uh, I don't know what it's called. What? I don't know what it's called in, in Hebrew, but they, they have to watch over all the person all the time because they were afraid it was going to be internal rupture, silent rupture, all these crazy names they had. I remember I lived in Bnei Brak and I saw this one rabbi. It's a well-known rabbi that he speaks like fire and brimstone speeches. The fact is he's a very nice person, really nice person, but that's the way he learned. So he came to me and he says, how was your wife? So I said, well, she's in the hospital. He said, that's good because the suffering helps a person. So I said... I mean, I think that God is in infinite and He can help a person without all the suffering. He just didn't know what to say. The guy didn't know. No, but... Bah, 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 bah. Right? The fact of the matter is, is yes, the Rebbe is telling us that suffering can clean a person off. 
And so if it happens, God forbid, to yourself, God forbid, happens to yourself, so you can justify it. But if it happens to somebody else, you can't say, eh, you deserve it. Hine. Okay, so if you do tshuva, you're forgiven. What is this thing called tshuva? What is tshuva? When, when did the class end, by the way? Another five minutes? Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Okay, yeah, if you, do, if you do a positive commandment, you do tshuva, you're forgiven. If you transgress a negative commandment, you have to do tshuva, and then Yom Kippur brings forgiveness. If it's a, a, a commandment where there is what's called excommunication or death from, from the, uh, the heaven or whatever, then you have to do tshuva and Yom Kippur and suffering. But what is tshuva? What does tshuva mean? What is tshuva supposed to be? Okay, Mr. Smith, you with me? He may be old. Mitzvah Zachuva, the Mitzvah Zachuva from the Torah is Azivas Hachet Bilavad. The Mitzvah of doing Chuva means you, how do you say, leave the sin. You, how uh, do you say, uh, huh? Distance yourself. You, uh, you, you, you become a different person. You say, oh, I'm not going to do this anymore, right? I used to break windows. I used to run with my, my motorcycle and break windows. I'm not doing it anymore. It's a stu- what, how could I have done such a thing? That's it. I'm sorry, God. I'm never going to do it again. That's it. That's called tshuva. Right? I made a mistake. I'm a different person now. The person who used to break those windows, that was somebody else, not me. Kedi'isa, like it says in the Gomorrah and Paragimel of Sanhedrin, and Bechoshen Mishpat. Bechoshen Mishpat allows the laws of damages etc., about witnesses. A witness, a person who is a sinner, cannot be a witness. You can't accept his testimony. When can a person stop being a sinner? When he, uh, I say, he uh, separates himself totally from the sin. He has the chance to do it, and he doesn't do it anymore. It says a gambler, he breaks his, his dice or his cards or whatever, throws them away. Hainu, sheyig mor belibo, that he resolves in his heart, but Lev Shalem with a complete heart, Labal Yeshuv owed not to return again, Lekisla, not to return again to his foolishness. And this is the big words here. Put a line under this. Limrod b'malchuso Yisbarech, to rebel against God's kingship. Velo Yaavor owed, and he will not transgress again. Mitzvah Samelech, the commandments of the king, Chas v'Shalom, whether positive commandments or negative commandments. Oh, now we see, doing tshuva just doesn't mean I'm not going to smash any more windows. That's not what it means. Doing tshuva means I'm not going to go against God anymore. What's the problem with a person eating not kosher food? What's the problem with a person not keeping Shabbos? What's a person when a person does, that he doesn't want to put on tefillin? What's the main problem? He says, what do you mean what's the problem? Eric? He was supposed to do it. It says in the Bible you're supposed to do it. And he did, he did it. Or he, it says in the Bible you're not supposed to do it. And he did it. He refused... Uh, yeah, there's the certain deeds you got to do, like, like you're know, in the army. So you're in the army, your boots have to be shined. If they're not shined, you get punished. What's the question? There's a, there's a whole line of, yeah, you got to be a good Jew. There's a line, there's conduct, there's rules. What you got to do? I just, says the Rebbe, that's not it. That's not it. He says, we're not here talking about that you went against the Bible. We're not talking that you went against Judaism, that you weren't one of the club, you didn't do according to the rules. We're talking about that you went against God. God is the king of the universe. God creates you. He is your king. He is your commander. You have to do what God says. I have to? Oh yeah? Watch this. Right? What day is it? Shabbos? What? Kosher? Uh, right? I can do what I want. Right? What are you talking about I have to? I'm the, I'm the boss here. I can do what I want. Once in a while I'll do what God wants. I'll go to shul. When I leave shul on Shabbos, I light up a cigarette, a car, a pipe. Right? The rabbi has to speak through a microphone. Oh, speak through a microphone. What's the problem? You're not allowed to speak through a microphone. I am allowed? Yes, I am. I'm leaving them allowed. We want to see? I do it. Here. That's the sign I'm allowed. If God creates the world, he's such a boss, then how does he let me do a thing like this? Obviously, the sign is that I can do what I want. It says, oh, that's called a sin. That's called a sin. God gives you free will to do what you want. A sin means I'm the king. I'm the king. I'm going to do what I want. What? That's a, that's a sin. What does it mean doing tshuva? I'm not the king. I was wrong. God is the king. I'm never going to, not just saying I won't do this thing anymore. Right? Oh yeah, I realized that 
that I, sh I should keep Shabbos because why now that I'm not keeping Shabbos, so my son got sick and my house fell down and my car won't start and nobody laughs at my jokes and I feel terrible, but now I'm going to keep Shabbos. All of a sudden it's totally, my son is healthy like a horse and my house is the building, they, they built, the, I got a thing from the country, they're building two more stories on my house and everybody's laughing at my jokes and my wife likes me and everything is wonderful, right? Because I'm keeping Shabbos, it's so wonderful. It says that you got the whole thing wrong. The whole thing wrong. The relationship between the Jew and the mitzvahs is really a relationship not between the Jew and the mitzvah. It's a relationship between the Jew and the king of the universe. Connector. Huh? A mitzvah is a because the mitzvah is connecting you. So what is doing tshuva? Tshuva doesn't mean I'm not going to do this thing anymore. Tshuva means because I did this thing, even the smallest thing, because I did this thing, I was declaring uh, that God is not the king over me, that I can do what I want to. I've all of a sudden doing tshuva, I say, I was wrong. I'm never going to do that again. From now on, God is going to be the king over me. That's the language of doing tshuva. That's the end of the class? One of the class in? Five more minutes. V'zehu ikar perish lashen tshuva. That's what the main thing of doing tshuva means. Tshuva means to return. To return what? To return to God with all of your heart and with all of your soul. What does it mean to return? The very second that you got born, the very second that you got born, you got an ego. You could make choice. If so, the very second that you got born, you were already in trouble, right? It says, not so. You weren't in trouble. Every the second you were born, that's when you became a real human being. That's when you really became important in God's eyes. Before that, you were a soul, an angel, whatever you were. Very nice, wonderful. There you couldn't do any sins. You had no free choice. They weren't really a person. When you got born... Now you have a free choice. Now you can serve God with your free choice. You can choose. F choose means, on one hand, I feel me. On the other hand, I feel God. Now the question is, who is supposed to be who? God is supposed to serve me. He's supposed to give me eyes and ears and nose and mouth and food and everything like that. And if he doesn't, I get mad. Ah, what type of a life is this? What type of a thing is this? The Holocaust, no good, everything is terrible. Or maybe I'm supposed to serve God. Right? What is life owes me or what I owe life? Simply speaking, you can make the choice. That's what a human being is. So as soon as a person gets born, as what? He gets separated from God. All of a sudden, he he's not, doesn't realize God like he was when he was a soul. But when he was in a soul, that was like being an incubator. He had no choice, he had nothing. But now as soon as you get born, you're separated. You feel a separation, you feel yourself. That's what tshuva means. Tshuva means to return back to that feeling that there was before you were born. That's what it means to return to God with all of your heart and all of your soul. Returning the tshuva doesn't necessarily mean you didn't any sins. It's a constant process that everybody has to do all the time. That's why it says that Mashiach is going to make the, tshuva, the, the tzaddikim do tshuva. Why? Because he's just going to show them a, a higher way of coming close to the Creator. A greater, right? Ulishmor et kol mitzvah To do all of his commandments, like it says, Yazov Rasha Darko. A person should leave, his, an evil person should leave his own ways. And a person, the sins of his thoughts. And it brings in Yom Yom, Avon, the word Avon also means to be powerful. Powerful, a capital I. The Avon means own, also the word own, means power. A person's I think, I want, I know, I, I. A person feels ooh, like he's big Napoleon, right? Napoleon used to be in America when I was a kid. I remember when they, ever, they showed like a cartoon or something of a, a mental institution, all the people were always walking around. You ever see that? They used, that was the classic insane person. Insane asylums, everybody's walking around, they all think they're Napoleon. Everything's Napoleon. What's Napoleon? I, I decide, I want, I think, I want. It says that is the biggest mistake that you can make. What happens if you do it? You're going, Mamash, against the king of the universe. What can you do? Chuba. All you have to do is say, listen, I made a mistake. I, from now, I thought that I was the king. Now I realize that you're the king. The Yeshuv El Hashem and return back to God. Okay, two more minutes. Uba Parsha's Netzavim, in the Parsha of Netzavim in the uh, in the Torah, right near the end of the book of Deuteronomy, it says, Veshavta Ad Hashem Elokecha, that you should return back to God, your God, and Shamata Bakolo. Listen to his voice. Bechal Avavacha, return to God with all of your heart. Shuva Yisrael, return Jews, ad until Hashem Elokecha. 
until Hashem becomes Elokecha, becomes your power. Hashiveinu Hashem Elecha. God should return, please God, return us to you. And as all these are saying the same thing. God, do us a favor. Make us realize the big picture so that we really see and we can really feel, we can understand that you are the king. Then what happens if you feel that God is the king? What happens? Then you become neutralized. You become like a slave. You know, you feel, if people think, you know, God is going to be the king, what's it going to be? All of a sudden you have a picture. All the humanity is going to be like with their heads down, their legs are all shackled one to the other. They're all walking in line. You know, everybody does the same thing. Exactly the opposite. Exactly the opposite. People, when they're, they're not connected to Hashem, then they become the same, right? Everybody, I remember in, in like in high school, everybody, you could tell a person what he thought by, his, by how, he, how he dressed, right? All the bikers dressed the same. All the wild people, all the artists, they dressed the same. All the, you could tell, right? They, they, they had their way that they had to do. Everyone is in the same, same, uh, which one? In the, the, the same, all the communists, the same idea. All the Republicans, same idea. As soon as a person decides to himself that he wants Hashem to be his boss, then what happens? God, then all of a sudden the person is independent. Suddenly he feels it's just me and God. Now I just do what God says, and suddenly you feel free. What does it mean you feel free? You haven't got as many fears. You haven't got as many desires. Right? When people are afraid, they all act the same. They all take this, the Prozac or whatever, they take all the same. When they're depressed, same thing. Right? When they have desires, same thing. Right? Millions of people watch the same program on television. They spend all their time doing the same exact things. Why do they do it? Because they lose their identity. Or they don't even have any identity. Right? When there was Michael Jackson, everybody had to act like Michael Jackson. Right? Everybody had to look like that. When there were, all of a sudden comes you know, some other person, everybody has to know one, one pant on, one pant off. Uh, 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 after, uh, right? Yeah, everybody, that all of a sudden, where is your identity? Who are you really? Right? No, I have to be like everybody else. Because you're worried. Well, what's everybody going to think about me? What's going to be tomorrow? What's going to be today? Maybe I'll lose. Maybe I'll this. People walk around in fear all the time. People walk around in fear. They say that 99, somebody said 99% of the world walks around in fear. What does it mean, fear? They don't know what's going to be. They don't know what's going to happen. What's going to be with my house? What's going to be with my kids? What's going to be with me? Am I going to be popular? Am I going to be with, what's going to happen to me? Right? He said 99% of the people in the world are afraid, and the other 1%, they're afraid even to answer, to fill out the questionnaire. They didn't want to. <clears throat> but if a person is with God, right, if a person is with God, then the fear is a lot less. Sure, you're sure a human being, you don't know, but always you have to think, listen, God will take care of it, it'll be okay. That gives you more energy to do good things. It gives you more, so I'll fail. It's not the end of the world, so I'll fail. So what? Right? God will help me. God wants me to, to try. On the other hand, you won't do stupid things. Why, why should I take drugs? Why should I steal this guy's wife? For what? Just because uh, because I want, but God doesn't want me to do it. What God doesn't want me to do? You were a slave. That's right. So it means who is going to be? You're going to be a slave to what? Either to yourself, to your own ideas, to your own fears, to your own lusts, to your own ideas, or are you going to be a servant to Hashem, the Creator of the universe, who is creating you? Huh? <laughs> a slave, a slave to this or a slave to that? Right. Wanted to push, God to serve somebody.